Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Sakes podcast. I'm Bailey Policki. He's Jacob Liberta, and we're a Minnesota sports podcast. So if you're a Minnesota sports fan, Minnesota Wild fan, uh, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like as well and help us reach other Minnesota sports fans. Uh, today we're going to be discussing Minnesota Wild and can they win the Central Division? Obviously, they're off to a hot start, and we've kind of just been talking about that weekly here. How they just they keep winning games, they keep winning the wild way, playing hard fought games, gritty games, but they also have this the speed and the skill uh, to blow teams out. Like they blew out Dallas seven to one, um, and they had a great game against the Tampa Bay Lightning here recently, a four to two victory. So I mean, they can win any sort of game, and that's what's been super encouraging about this team is they they can win in multiple ways. The goaltending seems to be picking it up a little bit here. And uh, Jared Spurgeon's been out with an injury, and they haven't seemed to really miss him too much, which is a great sign for how the rest of this team's been playing. So, I mean, obviously the rest of the Central isn't off to a great start. The Wild are ahead by four points. The Blues are the second-place team, followed by Winnipeg and then Colorado, Nashville, and then even Dallas is kind of in the mix. But, I mean, really for me, the only – the only team that I'm still keeping my eye, eye on that's back there is Colorado because they've still got a couple games in hand compared to us. Um, they're, they're starting to figure it out. They're 7-2-1 and one in their last 10 games. So I, obviously they have the capability to be dangerous, and I, really the only downfall for that team could potentially be the goaltending with Darcy Kemper out there. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on the way the Central Division stacking up, and do you like the Wilds' chances? You know, I think we got a great chance to win this division, really. I – I came into the season thinking we did have a chance, but not not as big of one as I feel like we have right now, just because I think the central division is deep, but I don't think there's any like like you said, Colorado is definitely a team to keep an eye on. I feel like they've had a lot of early season injuries that they're still coming back from. So I think they're gonna get better as it goes along. But everybody else, I I don't know. St. Louis got off to a hot start, but they've uh gone down since then. And Dallas, like you said, I think that's a middling team. I think the same thing with Nashville. I think Winnipeg's a solid wild card team, something like that. But I think there's a lot of a lot of teams that aren't pushovers, but they're not great either. So yep. truthfully, I, I would dare to say this might be a two horse race already between the wild and then the avalanche once they're at full strength, just because I I mean the the play is undeniable. I do you just be the back to back uh Stanley Cup champ and the Tampa Bay Lightning and their coach came out after the game was like, yeah, this team seems like a championship contender. Like they're yeah. big and physical and they play well and um, they, ne- they never go away. It's like we've we had all these goals this year on the uh, with the extra man at the end of a game. We pulled mm-hmm. it totally. Like that's been incredible. And then you're getting all these unheralded seasons from guys like uh, Ryan Hartman, who's top 10 in the league in goals. And then you got, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got uh, Kirill Kaprizov, who's also top 10 in points. So mm-hmm. it's like you get – uh, I think Kaprizov's obviously not a surprise, but then I feel like Foligno's scoring a lot too, and I think he's yep. taking a big big step forward. And I, I think it's no coincidence either that the two guys that scored and that um, to win that game against Tampa Bay at the end were, were Hartman and Foligno. Like, I don't think that's right. a mistake. I think those guys are having huge seasons, like uh, above expectation. And I think that's usually what makes a cup contender is when they go really deep and beyond just the stars when you're getting all these uh, really – feels like career seasons for these guys. So – I, I can't deny that the Wild have a great chance to win the Central Division. And I think all that needs to get better here is, I mean, I believe we're fourth in goals per game, but the problem is defensively we're, we're not very good. We're still top five in penalty minutes. Like, that has to get better. Yeah. And, then, like, Talbot, I think, right now ranks 23rd and goals allowed average. And and then he's uh, both – I think he's exactly the same, 23rd for save percentage. And obviously that's not all on him, but I think he's got to be a little better. But then our defensemen also have to be a little bit better. But yep. what it's worth, Talbot's uh, tied for first and uh, goalie wins, so that's cool. But Yeah, and obviously he plays a ton compared to Kakinen, who's uh, – you know, he's played about four games so far this season. He's I think he's done an okay job. It'd, it'd be nice to – after, like, that hot streak he had last season, I was convinced this guy's going to be your goalie of the future, but – Ever really since then, he hasn't uh, played that great. So, but yeah, I think what I was going to mention is, you know, obviously Kaprizov, the goals aren't quite there for him, but the assists have been off the charts. I mean, he's been, he's been passing like crazy so far to start this season, but uh, our other star, Kevin Fiala really hasn't gotten going yet. And, you know, we're 21, 22 games into the season already, but like that's on tap production. Exactly. And, you know, we're making up for it with guys like you said, Hartman, Foligno, Joel Erickson, Eck, um, even fourth line guys like Duhame and Sturm are playing super well. Yeah. 
So you're getting production out of guys like them, and you're just kind of waiting for Kevin Fiala to find it because once he finds it, he's going to go on a tear. And then you're still waiting for like the Kaprizov, you know, hot streak where he starts scoring a bunch of goals too. So it's like, I mean, it's possible that that never happens and Kaprizov just kind of has a whole hum goal year, which would be a little disappointing. But it really, as long as he's getting all the assists and the Wild keep winning games, it doesn't really matter. But uh, Fiala, like, you, he kind of needs to start scoring goals because otherwise he's not getting the assists like Kaprizov is. He's not quite the playmaker that Kaprizov is. So, Fiala's production really comes from putting pucks on the net, and you can tell he's getting frustrated. He's kind of been in the doghouse a little bit with Dean Evison just for some effort things. He's had um, some unlucky breaks too. He has, yeah. He's been snake bitten, and that happens to all goal scorers. So it's bound to happen, and he's bound to snap out of it too. But yeah, once he can break out of that, that's just a whole nother level the Wild can reach in terms of offensive production. Defensively, I do agree. I'd like to see them get better, but it seems like. Uh, like guys like John Merrill and Jordy Ben specifically have stepped up with Jared Spurgeon out. I'm still not the biggest fan of Kulikov. I think he's been okay, but you know, once Spurgeon comes back, you know, they have Kalen Addison up right now, but he hasn't really gotten much action. Hmm. So I don't know. I, I don't think that third pairing is really going to improve much throughout the season. I just don't think Addison's going to get much run there. So it kind of is what it is at this point. We're just going to kind of have to hope that Talbot steps it up, but they make yeah, a deadline move. Yeah, we, we maybe could, I guess. I don't know. That'll be interesting to see because, like, we talked about in our previous Wild video, like, would they potentially trade Kevin Fiala? I mean, it's something to think about, I guess, If but if the production is not there and maybe he just needs a fresh start. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I still don't quite want to give up on that yet just because once he gets going, he's just so freaking fun to watch. But I know, right? Yeah, I just – there's so many good things to say about this team, but it just it kind of feels like we're saying the same things over and over again because it's like every game almost kind of feels the same for the Wild, just the way they play. They just keep on keeping on. That's great. I mean, uh, when things are rolling, let's just keep it going, I guess. I know I can nitpick uh, really Evanston for some, uh, I would say, really looking at this roster and who plays sometimes, like sticking Rask out there. I mean, yeah, I, I, I could frustrate everybody, but at the same time, like I'm not gonna go after him while we're winning. Like if we're winning games, I don't really care. But yeah, um, still, I, there's sort of some nitpicks. But I mean, just keep the good times rolling. I guess. I mean, I think they've they've won all the games they should to this point in the year. I would say. I think the only bad loss I could think of through was this like 20 some games now. I could probably think of, like that uh, loss in Seattle really early in the season. Like, mm-hmm. That wasn't great, but we find we found ways to grind out wins that we should, and then we played competitively against the best in the league. Really, I mean, hung around with Florida. Obviously, that didn't turn out in our favor. And then um, on that same trip down in Florida, we um, played Tampa Bay and uh, took them took them to the end with uh, two goals there uh, yeah. late in the third period with the uh, extra man advantage. But I don't know. I, I think this team's got a lot of got a lot of capability and. It's, like I said, I keep on saying, I guess, is uh, just keep things rolling. Yeah, I think my – probably my bare minimum expectation would be for this team to finish second in the division just because yeah, I, 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 I truly think we're better than the Blues, we're better than the Jets, we're better than Nashville. I, th- I feel like they're about to fall down here too because they kind of got off to a hot start, but they've been losing games lately. Mm-hmm. Um, Dallas I'm not worried about. So I Colorado, yeah. On paper, they're the better team without question, but yep. they have to prove it that they are, and they have to get more points than us at the end of the day. So Exactly. And the thing is, too, is I can't sleep on Colorado at all just because they were the preseason cup favorite coming into the season just like yeah. they were last year. So they're going to be pretty good, I think, once they put it all together this year. Absolutely. And those will be some fun rivalry games, too. Does, yes. I, I think we've already played Colorado once this year, but uh, so. just being able to see how we match up with them. We have more speed this year, so – it, mm-hmm. it could be it could get interesting. I mean, the Wild might be able to have a shot to punch Colorado in the mouth because last year was not good against Colorado. So yeah, I think the end goal, even if we don't win the division the regular season, the biggest thing is just getting out of the division of the playoffs because we've never done that with this current format, the way the playoffs have been. So that'd be huge to uh, be the team out of the Central there and um, in that Western Conference playoffs. Yeah, that would be fantastic because. Who knows? Maybe the four seat, you know, because you two and three play and then one and four play. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It, it could be interesting, but yeah, maybe when the division, you don't even end up playing a team in your division either, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, that could be good, especially with some of those teams that are out west. Like right now, Vegas is in fourth, but that's like, not a draw I'd want, but they're probably no. not going to end up there either. 
Anaheim's in third. Like I could see them falling down. Calgary and Edmonton are kind of off to a hot start too, but those Dude, teams yeah. could easily slide down too. Leon Dreisaitl through 20 games. He has 40 points. He got 20 goals and 20 assists. He's literally on an 82 goal pace right now, a quarter into the season. <laughs> the guy's insane. And then they, of course they have McDavid too. It's it's insane. But then like the rest of their team is just not very good. So oh no, it's not. But like hey, you can certainly ride the coattails of those two for a while. But when it comes to the playoffs, and you you just don't know because I think they've only won one playoff series with McDavid as long as he's been there. Yeah, I think that's right. But yeah, so that's not good. Yeah, it'll just it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out. I mean, obviously we're gonna you know keep doing wild videos and keep checking in on them, but I I really expect them to just remain the status quo and uh, just keep doing what they've been doing, playing good hockey. Hopefully the injury bug doesn't hit them too hard. Um, I saw Freddie Goudreau was a late scratch against Coyotes with COVID protocols, so hopefully that's not gonna be an issue again here with this team. So I don't know, man. I'm I'm pretty excited, and uh, I think what's kind of nice about this team is there'll be some fun regular season games, but the real excitement's going to start once playoff time comes. I agree. But for the here and now, I think the, the wild speaking of these matchups in the regular season, I think they do have a few fun ones coming up against some uh, good teams. Again, I know we've just got done playing a, a couple good ones, like including Tampa, but I think we got Toronto on the schedule here within the next week or so, I want to say, I think yep. Edmonton too. Okay. Yeah. That'll be fun to see how we stack up against teams like that. I mean, I'm kind of excited to see us play against McDavid and Dreisaitl. I mean, yeah, I know, right? you, don't get, you don't really get to see that too often, so that should be fun. But, um, yeah, that'll do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. If you're a Minnesota sports fan, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like as well. Feel free to give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram and leave your comments below what you think about this wild squad, if you think they're going to win the division, uh, if you think they're, they're going to have a tough time matching up with Colorado, and uh, – who you've been impressed with so far this season. So thanks for watching.